So, so John said uh, Congressman Waters and I are going to take some questions. I just want to know we worked it out and Maxine takes the harder questions. <laughs> so we have a few minutes. We can take, we take a couple of questions. There's no uh, wireless mic on the floor, but if you raise your hand and, and speak up, uh, we'll take advantage of, of this fantastic opportunity. Who has a question? We have one in the back. Yeah. Real loud. No, thank you. Um, I think I'm going to ask my wife about that, too. But, um, <laughs> but, le <laughs> but let me make one point on that. So that's a great point you make. It's, it's sort of related. So when I was in the state, California State Legislature, I also worked on a bill on cyberbullying of children. So in the past, let's say um, before the Internet, the way people got bullied is it was sort of you and and, and uh, your friends and other folks, and if a bullying incident happened, some folks would know about it. The difference with the internet now is you could, let's say, take a very shameful photograph, and then a thousand people would know about it within an hour. Uh, so the ability to sort of um, get a lot of people aware of something that, is, that would make a student feel really horrible has put a lot of pressure now on kids in a way that didn't exist just a few decades ago. Uh, so we'll look at those issues. Thank you. Anyone else with a question? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, uh, the banks and financial institutions have the ability to create products and charge you uh, what they'd like to charge you for those products. The only way uh, to get the banks and financial institutions uh, paying more attention to the needs of the people and creating products that make good sense and not products that basically trick people into signing on the dotted line and they not knowing what they're uh, signing up for, is to have the members of Congress, your representatives, face to face with the CEOs of the major banks and financial institutions where we talk to them about our desire to have fairness in the system. And of course, we have the power to deal with regulations or deregulations. And so Dodd-Frank uh, reforms was that effort uh, to help bring the major financial institutions uh, to the point of, of negotiation uh, that would help them uh, to understand that we are serious about uh, having fairness in lending. And so the banks are in good shape right now. They're making a lot of money. As a matter of fact, with the president's tax reform, they now have billions of dollars uh, because, as you know, the top 1% benefited mightily from the tax reforms. And so we expect them to be fair. Um, we are talking with them. Uh, we are going to meet with them. I'm going to have all of the CEOs of the big banks in my committee in a few weeks. And we are going to have them answer questions about their practices. And we are going to encourage them uh, to come up with products and ways by which the average person who works every day, pays their bills, should be able to get a mortgage. And so we're going to work very hard on that and uh, push very hard and punish very hard if they don't do it. <laughs> We have time for just to, one more. There's one. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Lou, you talked about the legal challenges to the state of emergency. Um, can you say anything about whether Congress is addressing
addressing the Trump administration's use of eminent domain to take private property and right now to actually bulldoze the butterfly in Texas. That's a great point. So eminent domain would be a separate legal challenge uh, to the actual physical locations where they want to uh, build either a wall or fence or barriers. Uh, something else you might uh, want to think about is um, the reason that no construction has started essentially on, on the wall is a lot of our borders actually have natural features already where you don't need a wall. So you don't need 2,000 miles right from sea to sea uh, of a wall. And what actually ended up happening is uh, the Department of Homeland Security sort of said, okay, well, here's sort of like 55 miles where we might need some more stuff. That's why government was funded that way last week uh, with the new money going to, but since just 55 miles. But within that, you're gonna have some eminent domain issues uh, as well. Congressman Waters knows a lot about the eminent domain issues. I'm gonna have her uh, answer that. Eminent domain is a big issue. Uh, as a matter of fact, my conservative side of me opposes eminent domain. And I know all the mayors and folks who are concentrated on economic development don't like that. But I have always been uh, very concerned about the takings of properties, particularly residences, as we have seen in some cases in the past. The, pre uh, the President of the United States as a developer has a long history of uh, being involved in eminent domain in order to uh, build uh, or create uh, businesses, taking people's homes, et cetera. So what I did was I read a long history about eminent domain as it relates to the border. And it is a serious issue in that we have some small farmers and residents along the border who have been fighting eminent domain at different times in different ways in this country. And so now they're frightened, many of them are very frightened, uh, because the president is talking about the use of eminent domain as he goes about building this wall. There will be some resistance to that uh, by the, um, by the uh, people who are living along the border. But one of the things we must understand is the president does not really understand the terrain. He wants to put a fence in the water and on the mountaintop, and it just doesn't work that way. It is not a flat land that you just go and build uh, a big wall on. Uh, it is uh, a terrain that has, uh, you know, uh, mountains and uh, rivers and valleys and on and on and on. So. In addition to not being able to build a straight wall in the way that he's talking about, and I don't know how many miles he's talking about now, you have the eminent domain problem where if enough of the people get together and they challenge him on top of the lawsuits uh, that uh, the 15 entities already have going, he's going to have a fight on his hand. And let me just say this, and I think that it was alluded to, we do something called um, a resolution of disapproval about this emergency. And we will take it up in the House. If we take it up in the House, according to the Constitution, the Senate has to take it up. And so the Senate can take it up, uh, and they can agree with us, or they can disagree with us. Uh, the President certainly uh, does not have to sign it. But the fact of the matter is that led by our own Attorney General, Javier Becerra, working with the other states and entities like the ACLU and those, the, the lawsuits are gonna be so terrific and so awesome until, um, I don't think he's gonna be able to get it done. And I hope not, thank you.